What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Radaxa Rock Pi 4B. Now as you can see it looks a lot like a Raspberry Pi and I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for here. They make a few different models of this with different RAM sizes and the price varies. Now I haven't been able to find a price for just the board itself, only the kits. They include the power supply, case, heatsink, and your USB Type-C cable for power. For the one gigabyte kit, $64, but I have heard rumor that the one gigabyte variant without any extras is around 40 bucks. The two gigabyte kit is 74, and the four gigabyte kit is $90. Now you gotta remember, if you're in the United States, this is shipping from China, I have no clue how much they're gonna charge you shipping, so you might wanna factor that in on top also. Recently, a lot of these manufacturers have been releasing boards just like this, not the same form factor, but with the same CPU, the Rockchip 3399. On paper, these CPUs should be pretty powerful, but I have yet to see somebody come out with some really good software that supports everything that this chip is capable of. The closest thing we have right now is Android, and I know a lot of people get these single board computers to run like a Linux desktop on it. I have not had any luck with any of the boards that I own, which is at nine right now. Got nine of these RK3399 boards sitting on my desk right now, and I have not had a great experience with any of them running a Linux desktop. Now, if you want to run a headless Linux server or something like that, be my guess, it's going to work fine. But we don't have acceleration on the desktop, YouTube acceleration, unless you do a lot of configuration, then some stuff's not going to work in one area and it's going to work better in the other. It's been a mess with the RK3399, but I wanted to take a look at this one here because it is the exact same form factor as a Raspberry Pi 3. On the right, we have the Pi 3. On the left, we have the Rock Pi 4B. Theoretically, the Rock Pi should fit in any case that the Raspberry Pi 3 can fit in, but you got to remember this thing generates a lot more heat than the Pi does. And it doesn't use micro USB, it actually uses USB type C, which is a bit wider. So there is a little bit of modification you may have to do. The model of the Rock Pi that I have here is the two gigabyte version. I also got the USB type C charger, case, and heat sink. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it together, then we're gonna go over the specs and test this thing out. Sometimes I really enjoy these acrylic cases and then sometimes they're just a little bulky, but this is necessary for the heat sink on the bottom. I have tested a lot of these 3399s and I can tell you it needs a heat sink. If you want maximum performance out of this chip, you better keep it cool. So for the CPU in this thing, we have the Rockchip RK3399. This is a six core CPU. Two cores are at 1.8, four cores are at 1.4. The GPU is the Mali T860 MP4. It's a four core GPU. Already talked about the different models with different RAM sizes, so we'll move to storage. It does have a micro SD card slot, an eMMC module slot, and an M.2 connector on the bottom for M.2 SSDs. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, it does 2.4, 5 gigahertz, gigabit LAN with power over Ethernet and Bluetooth 5.0. Two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, 40 GPIO laid out just like the Raspberry Pi, an MIPI CSI two lane camera connector, as for operating systems, in this video I'm going to be testing out their Android TV version, but they do offer a few others on the website, and there's more to come. So with all that out of the way, I'm ready to get into some testing here. I want to see if this performs any better than the last RK3399 board that I tested. Alright, so here we are guys. Nice looking Android TV interface here. When I originally tested this, they did not have Google Play. I tried installing it, it wouldn't work. But the newer builds do have Google Play, and they do work fine. First thing I want to do here is go into IDA64. So obviously we have that rock chip 3399, two gigabytes of RAM, and supposedly it is DDR4. Four A53 cores at 1.4, two A72 cores at 1.8. And we have a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 with that Mali T864 core GPU. This will do up to OpenGL 3.2. Android version. 7.1.2. This is NuGet. So I've already run a bunch of tests here and we're going to go over a couple benchmarks versus some of these other RK3399 boards, Nvidia Shield, and the Tinker board just to kind of get an idea of how this thing does perform. Overall, it's pretty snappy. And like I mentioned, I have tested a lot of Linux desktop builds for these RK3399 boards and they're just not great. If you want to run Linux on something like this, make sure it's like a Linux server or a headless setup. Desktops are not good here. There's no acceleration unless you do some crazy configuration, and it's just not a great experience for an average user. Android, on the other hand, works really well. 
The first benchmark I ran was Geekbench 4. At the very top, we have the Rock Pi 4. That's the board we're using right now. Right underneath there, we have the NanoPi M4. It has the same exact chip, and it actually has 2 gigabytes of DDR3. Then the Asus Tinkerboard. And finally, at the very bottom, I went ahead and threw in the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. Since we're using Android here, it's really hard not to think about the Shield. It goes on sale all the time for 130 bucks, and it's actually my favorite TV device to use. Geekbench Multi-Core, the M4 still nudged ahead by a little bit. Now this could have to do with cooling. The M4 does have a bigger heatsink on it, and maybe throwing a fan on this thing will net better performance, but I wanted to keep it stock straight out of the box to see what we got. But if we take a look at that shield score, it's ahead of everything. Onto some GPU benchmarks. This is GFX Bench. This is using OpenGL 2.0, T-Rex on screen, RockPi, and the NanoPi M4 were right there with each other. Unfortunately, the Asus Tinkerboard did not finish, and again, you just can't deny the performance of the Shield. 3D Mark, Ice Storm Extreme. Now you won't see a score here for the Shield because every time I run the Extreme version, it just says maxed out. As I was running this, I was sure that the Rock Pi was going to score right around what the M4 scored. Now I know these are lower scores in today's standards for newer Android phones, so every little bit helps here. And as you can see, the M4 came ahead of the Rock Pi by a decent amount. And the final benchmark was 3D Mark Slingshot. The Asus Tinkerboard would not finish this one. This uses OpenGL 3.2. As you can see, the Rock Pi and the M4 just aren't great at OpenGL 3.2. Every one of these RK3399 boards claim that they can do 4K 60fps smoothly. While it is true, not every single codec is going to work fine, so you got to find what's going to work. These are my go-to tests here. This is a 4K MP4 30fps video. This is Big Buck Bunny. Seems to be handling it pretty well. We'll move over to 60 in a second. Now as long as this sounds on here, this video is going to play fine. So this board's going to handle 30 FPS 4K video playback pretty good with most codecs that are supported with this CPU. Let's move over to 60 and see what happens. I've never really been able to get any of these ARM-based single board computers to play this file properly. And that's the problem I always run into. The audio desyncs, it'll actually even skip whole parts of the video and then we'll just get real choppy. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and test another 4K video. This is 120 megabits, 4K UHD HEVC 10bit.mkv. Looks pretty smooth, no stuttering, no skipping. I've actually had really good luck with the RK3399 in files just like this. Seems to handle them fine. As for YouTube 4K video playback, I just can't get it to set at 4K. Keep getting this error here, so I gotta go to 1080p. And forget about Netflix 4K, it has to be a certified device to even get that version of Netflix to install on something like this. That's just another thing to think about when you're looking for like a media playback device. But if you just need 1080p, something like this is going to work fine. We have zero drop frames and it looks great. Native Android Gaming seems to work fine here. This is Asphalt 8. Unfortunately, I could not get Asphalt 9 to install. It was incompatible with this device from the Play Store. I could have sideloaded it, but I have tested it before on RK3399 hardware. It does run, but it's not the best. If you want to play the Rockstar games from the Play Store, like Bully and Grand Theft Auto, they're going to work. You might have to set it to medium. Minecraft's going to work fine on here, and even PUBG does at low settings. But I really wouldn't recommend it. It's not a great experience either. Tried some Dreamcast emulation with Raycast, the standalone version, and RetroArch. 
It runs better in the recast standalone here, but it's still very choppy. This is Sonic Adventure 2, definitely not at full speed. I also went ahead and tried Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You take a look at the top left hand corner, we're at about 30 FPS, 33, we should be at 60. You can really feel the lag here. Here's some N64 emulation. This is 007 GoldenEye. I am using Moopin64 FZ Plus from the Google Play Store. Now this is one of the harder games to emulate correctly. It's not doing a bad job, but it's not stand up like I've seen in some other boards. This board will handle easier to emulate N64 games like Wave Race, Mario Kart, uh, Super Mario 64. There's a ton of games that are going to be playable on here and then you're going to run into a few like this that are just a bit laggy. And the final emulator I tested was PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. This is Tekken Dark Resurrection, 2X resolution. And as you can see, it's handling it just fine. So there are a ton of PSP games that are going to work perfectly on this board. And you're going to run into some like God of War Chains of Olympus, Killzone, Midnight Club that just aren't going to run well on this thing. God of War, Chains of Olympus, 1x resolution, all the speed hacks on. This is as low as I can set this, and we're only at about 25 FPS. Should be at 60. So overall, I mean, it performed like I expected it to. These RK3399 boards aren't much different between each other, and there are a lot of them out there right now. This chip isn't a new chip to hit the market. It's been out for a little while, and I expected performance to dramatically increase over the time it's been out, and I just really haven't seen it. Of course, this is more powerful than the CPU in the Raspberry Pi 3B+, but with the Raspberry Pi, we have the backing of the community. Everybody's got a Pi, everybody's doing something for it, and that's why the Raspberry Pi is just one of the best single board computers out there. If you're interested in purchasing one of these or just learning more about it, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the official website. You can check out everything you need to there. And definitely keep an eye on the channel because I do have kind of an RK3399 shootout coming up very shortly. I got a lot of these boards and I kind of just want to get down to which is the best one out there right now. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date. And like always... Thanks for watching.